It's being reported, y'all. Now, I think somebody's just being messy, honey, on the, uh, some of these producers with the Real Housewives of Atlanta. But it's being reported, y'all, that they just finished wrapping up. And they're saying, y'all, that there's going to be some interesting co- things coming on next season. Now, they're saying, y'all, that this season is expected to be one of the best in this year, y'all, ever. Now, some of the show producers are looking at the upgrade cash, y'all. And they're saying there's going to be some um, big stars and some new housewives, I guess. Now, they're saying, y'all... That for the upcoming season, the show's going to feature Housewives Sheree, Marlo, Kenya, Drew, Sonya, and Candy, y'all. Now, our producer is explaining, y'all, that Sheree and Marlo, y'all, they're saying are going to be the stars, the big stars of the season. Now, they say Drew brought the drama, and so did Kenya, but they say Sonya and Candy are on the chopping block. And I can't believe that, honey. I know Candy, honey, is definitely on the um, chop, chopping block. Now, they're saying, y'all, that Candy was boring this season, and she is the highest paid housewife and they say she's going to be gone after this season now if she's the highest paid they definitely gonna keep it because they definitely need their franchise star and i know definitely that that's a lie and they're saying that they're talking about bringing miss jenny Mai to join the cast now if y'all know who jenny mm-hmm. Mai is that's jesus wife and they're saying baby that they have a mansion um in atlanta and they say they split their time between atlanta and los angeles and they're saying you know that she's gonna be the big star to come on up so I don't believe it. From uh, the um, real? Yeah. I don't think she would do oh. that. Oh, He's going to let all that mess come up in his house. Uh-uh. Yeah, I don't it's think. It's Atlanta. No, ma'am. So, no. And it's a check, honey. But, you know, they, you know, they'll offer her a big old check, honey. So, you know, so mm, we're going to see how that turn out, though. But if Candace is the highest paid star, y'all, Maria, um, y'all, would y'all think they would cut the biggest star? Out? Would they do something like that? I mean, I think it matters. She has so many business endeavors and companies and all kind of stuff going on. And th- doesn't she have her own spinoff? Yeah, her spinoff I was is about say, to come. Candy not going nowhere. She has a new yeah. show with the old lady gang that's about to drop. And, yeah. I mean, each girl has their year. This is her year not to be petty or messy. I'm here for it. Yeah, so that's why I don't think Candy going nowhere, child. So they need to stop putting that out there, though. But we're going to see if Jenny comes, because Jenny just had a new baby, and, you know, that could help that um, household, honey. She's been off the real for a while since no, she's been on um, maternity leave. So I don't know. So we're going to see how this all turned out, honey. But, honey, I'm rooting for Candy, honey. So we're going to see, honey, who's going to be the biggest star this season. All right, moving on. In other celebrity news, y'all, this is a very sad day. We get y'all comedians, honey. Y'all need to pray, honey, because, I mean, like I said, the tears of a clown, honey. In Living Colors mm. um, star, y'all, Tommy Davidson said, y'all, that he has not spoken to Jamie Foxx since he wrote about Jamie being mean to him in his memoir. Now, Tommy said, y'all, that he was filming the movie Booty Call with Jamie Foxx, and he said Jamie was mercilessly mean to him to impress director Keenan Ivy Wayans. He said, I haven't actually heard from him, Tommy said to Page C. He said, now, I threw some light on this. He said, because the book actually was about how my odyssey can help the reader. He said, so I just pointed out all the situation that I was in and that I was able to eventually transcend. He said it was really a roadmap for the reader not only um, to understand something but to overstand it, y'all. It, it, do y'all go through this community to have Ricky, y'all? Especially can y'all have anybody being mean to y'all like this and y'all want to write a book on them and, and don't talk to them? I mean, this y'all comedians. Y'all supposed to... Um, Some of the white comedians was mean when I first started. Really? Uh, yeah, because they was intimidated. I had this guy named Mark uh God, I can't think of his name. But uh he was he was actually really, really mean to me. I went in there, had a good set. I think I was about nineteen or twenty, I had just started. And I went in there and tore it up. Back then it wasn't no no black comedy. It, it was just white people, you know. We did I did comedy two years in front of uh nothing but, you know, mainstream, uh mm-hmm. before black comedy took off. You know, Def Jam and all that came. And uh, th- this this guy had got me kicked off the show for the weekend. He mm. gave he rebooked me, or whatever. But then I blew up, and I was at this comedy club in Little Rock, Arkansas, and I saw that he was coming the next week. And I left him a note with my ticket sales and how much money I made. Not like remember me, I was oh, the no, comedian right. that opened for you that got fired. Uh, this is how much money I made this weekend. I gave him a receipt of what the comedy club had paid me because he probably wouldn't give me twelve hundred dollars. Uh, for the, for the weekend, and I think I walked out of that of that baby with a nice bag because I had sold out about five or six shows or whatever. Really? So and I was I put at the end, watch how you treat people. But yes, a lot of folks, man, a lot of them be really? insecure and they be uh, uh scared of young talent that's coming up or whatever and intimidated by it, and they don't show love. And like I I 
I grasp on to them young comedians uh, because I learn from them and they keep your ass relevant. Okay. Or whatever, because you get stuck in the 80s or the 90s or whatever and you ain't relevant. You look and kind of see what they're talking about. It kind of help you figure out what you need to talk about, what people are laughing at, what's trending or whatever. So you do have to get with the just hilarious and the Desi Banks and the, uh, you know, and, and D. Ray Davis and, and all those comedians to kind of see what the vibe is where you won't be stuck. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, yeah well, you squash your beef and move on. But uh, that's unfortunate because both of them are uh, Jamie Foxx and Tommy Davis are really nice guys, both me- big brothers and mentors. I hope yeah. they pull it together, you know, and talk. Exactly. All right, the Kahlua today, honey, is one of my favorite. My Kahlua today, y'all, is Medusa. On the high end, you say Medusa, and on the low end, you say beautiful gold. That's your Kahlua for today. Hey, Rock. What up, man? That damn night, a uh, uh, little baller was sitting up in the comedy club in Atlanta. <laughs> And uh, <laughs> Tommy Davis said, uh, shout out to my man over here. He didn't know that was a little baller with the Larry Holmes haircut. <laughs> Look just like Larry Holmes in the 80s. <laughs> he kept going back to him all night. So he said, you like that joke right there? My man, get him one more time with my man with the Larry Holmes haircut. <laughs> I couldn't have been there, dog. He had that little fade, that little fade going in at the top, and it was real flat. Yep. <laughs> and it was going bald in the middle. <laughs> Me and Rock T knocked over two tables. We was on the floor. <laughs> oh, I look at him no more. And then your boy, your boy Keenan, we was at the uh, karaoke night in Dallas, and Tommy Davis was on stage. Your boy Keenan had on that that stripy shirt he had bought from Riches, right? Yeah. He said, and he had a little Jerry curl, had a little curl, whatever. He said, shout out to Ronald McDonald. <laughs> 